so coming back here to VMAX, um, here, in addition to changing latency, you can change the passphrase here. Um, there, you can set the key length to be 16, 24, 32 random characters and set that as a password. Um, so you'll just input the password here. Um, stream ID, I think, is only if you do have another layer of SRT traversal you need to go with. Um, so you could input that information here. Typically, we just need the host name and port latency. Um, we haven't been using passphrases as much as we should, but we're probably going to start doing that soon. But here's where it'll configure all that. And then in terms of quality, um, you could do that over here, hitting the cogs to change your bitrate here, what codec you're doing. SRT is great because it's codec agnostic. Um, HEVC, in order to enable that on vMix, you do have to jump through a few hoops. Um, because of the way HEVC is created, it's not an open source codec. It is owned by someone, and all the people who develop apps with it do need to pay for a license fee. So that's why with Windows, it's not just baked in default. Uh, I know, like for example, in the new iOSs, um, those are all encoding images on HEIC, which is the HEVC equivalent for images. Um, and that sometimes people have difficulty opening those on Windows because Windows doesn't have that codec. So um, there, we haven't yet to. We've been playing around. There's some guides on vMix for getting HEVC on Windows. I've yet to get that to work. Um, that is some we want to work on soon. Um, the benefits of HEVC over H.264 is, according to the creators of HEVC, they say that it is about double the quality. So that means you could send a 2 megabit stream and have it look as good as a 4 megabit H.264 stream, which is pretty great to um, if that way, if you're in low network bandwidth situations or anything, you can kind of get away with a little bit better signal at a lower bit rate. Um, however, um, it does take a little bit more processing power. Um, so a lot of CPU chips are made to encode H.264, and they're not necessarily made for HEVC just yet. So if you are using HEVC, just try to be conscious of what you're doing to the computer. Um, so to come back here to output settings, let's finish up here. Um, SRT, you can send different audio rates, so you can define that here. Um, and then you could use hard hardware encoder um, and low power encoder. I like using low power encoder. I have not seen any issues so far. Um, hardware encoder, that is something to be aware of. As a general rule of thumb, it's good to only have two hardware encodes at, at a time. And what hardware encoder is referring to is the graphics card. So it's not using the threads on a CPU to encode H.264 or something. It's using just a graphics card, which is great because a lot of times graphics cards do a better job. And also, your CPU has to be running a lot of other things on your computer at the same time, so it prevents you from overwhelming your CPU. However, some graphics cards only let you do two of those instances. So other things that you could hardware encode are records, and you could also hardware encode on uh, streaming. Um, so you just want to be aware that you try to only want to do two hardware encodes at a time. So while, as a general rule, hardware encoder is better, it isn't better if you're trying to do a lot of different things on it at the same time. So um, let's get out of here. Um, so back to here, I'm just going to turn this NDI off. Um, you can um, come here to additional NDI outputs, and basically any camera, vMix call, or audio input that you have in vMix can show up on the NDI network, so other vMix boxes or other NDI devices can receive it, um, which is super great. So I don't, I'm not limited to four NDI sources out of it. Um, so I could just do this to turn them all on. Um, now NDI, because it is traversing your network, you do want to be careful, especially if you're on a one gigabit network or less. Um, you do want to just be conscious of how many NDI feeds you are initiating and then receiving and are running in and out of a box because you do only have a gigabit throughput on a lot of devices. So um, NDI can sometimes, so NDI have had differing um, experiencing with. Um, I've seen it be 150 megabytes per second to um, 180. That's what they say it is, but sometimes I've seen, you know, I try to add a fifth NDI source and then that's when things start slowing down, uh, which makes me believe that sometimes it could be up to 250. I don't actually really know what it's normally at, but I think it's kind of a black box about what rate it's going to. So uh, just try to be conscious when you're adding a lot of NDI sources on a network um, that you aren't overwhelming the network by adding too many and having too many running at a time. Um, so over here, you can also have your audio output show up on NDI. So that way, if you want to just take you know, bus A or something um, and send that over NDI, you can. Um, so that's a pretty good tool uh, to get you out of a jam if you need to. Um, over here in multi-view layout, you can customize the layout here. You could do a four box with a preview program in the top and then two other sources in the bottom. Um, normally, I leave it on the traditional eight camera mode with eight on the bottom, preview program at the top. Um, 
legacy will remove the input names from it, um, and you could get a little bit bigger picture on it. I do like back and going back and forth. A lot of shows I like legacy just because it's less cluttered screen and it's just cameras. Um, but what's nice about this one is it will give TRTs of packages that you might have in program in the multi-view itself. So it's like a great way to be able to get counts and things like that. Um, and then um, there's a 16 box mode here if you want to just send 16 sources and or 14 and preview program. Um, and you could customize it here too. Um, so um, you could pick where the title lands, um, the, the headings, what you want them to say, and then you could select exactly which input you want to go there. Um, so I could just pick like a video call here, uh, any input, the cameras, ju like just the cameras specifically, um, any title image, replay box, et cetera. So it's great you could configure them. Um, that's a relatively new feature to vMix. So it's really great that you can really get your multi views dialed down to be uh, what you need it to be. And that's pretty much it for um, this menu here.